Joining us now with his outlook for the season and Q4 is BMO Capital Markets, Simeon Siegel. It must be the holidays because Simeon's back. So how do you spot winners in this environment? Good to see you, Sarah. So isn't it fascinating? We've got the stocks, which are showing this huge divergence, but then we also have just revenues. And that's what we should care about right now. And so I think there's this huge rhetoric that's simply saying trade down wins and otherwise it doesn't. But you look at different businesses. It's all about the nuance. Michael Kors revenues are down, coaches are up. They sell the same thing, arguably. So, and that's one example of many. And so what we're looking for, we're looking for good businesses. And it's nice to hear that gas is coming down. That'll be a nice relief for all of us. We're probably gonna see a lot of promotions and there's gonna be a lot of big stories, but there's gonna be certain companies that have figured out a way to predict their demand and certain ones that do not. And that's what we've been seeing this earnings cycle. So what are your top three? So when I look at them right now, I think I'll benefit from that trade down with the TJX. I think that makes a lot of sense. And I think they're becoming increasingly more important to brands. So that's one. I think another one that actually was not a good performer over this, the, the recent two weeks, which was fairly exuberant, was Bath & Body Works. But I think that mm. what people are missing is the fact that they actually saw their first operating income growth in a very long time. So we'll go out, we'll buy some candles. I think that's going to make a lot of sense. <laughs> And then listen, what's what's a holiday without some New Year's resolutions and going with a Planet Fitness that is now getting their story back in line? So as I think about going forward, I want to find those businesses that are showing me a good ability to drive the bottom line and may have some missed price in there as well. Yeah, I mean, the, the problem, Simeon, is that everybody's warning about the holiday quarter and, and seeing softness from the consumer at the high end, at the low end, seeing increased promotional activity. It doesn't bode well for the, for the whole group, no matter what the strategy, does it? So, Sarah, you and I talk about this a lot. I think the problem and opportunity with retail investing is that it's such an accessible sector that we create these stories because we can anecdotalize very easily. Peloton is the easiest one to think about, where we all saw the vans walking out our door and thought it was going to be a mega cap. But I, I think at the end of the day, those revenues matter. And, and that's why, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think there is no question the macro is scary for so many reasons. It's the reason that this sector collapsed in October, but in the last two weeks exploded up. I mean, my, my average company is up 12% simply because they reported earnings. The, the earnings were not spectacular by any stretch of the imagination. They just allowed people to remember that there's actually a business behind the macro here. And so I think when we think about the macro, it's very scary. I think the overhang from a consumer spending is very scary. Obviously, the world is in a tough spot in general. I think that we will see those stories in a negative light. But if the companies are growing revenues and or if they're growing their operating profit, it means they're getting through this. And so I don't disagree with you, but it doesn't mean there aren't going to be companies that aren't going to do well through it. Yeah, that's a fair point. Uh, we personalize a lot of industries research. Airlines are a great example, even restaurants and media, uh, especially for those who cover them. I do wonder, you know, we're talking a lot about holiday, Simeon, but I wonder how you think the, the tone is going to feel after the new year, once we're into Q1 and, and what the consumer backdrop looks like then. So listen, I love that because I'm gearing up for some turkey and then uh -huh. for better or worse, be in the mall. And so like my head is straight there. But I think at the end of the day, that's the right question. Like, Let's look beyond. Let's see which of these businesses that are going to do well. And that's where I think we'll be able to get a little bit of this dust settling. We'll be able to look and say, OK, which part of the consumer challenge is real? Which part of the overhang is simply that? It's an overhang. And then which of these stocks did this ricochet back and forth in October, November? But now, actually, do I want to think, do, do I believe there's compounding effects? TJX will be a compounder. Right? TJX, that story, brands need a place to sell their product. And TJ is there with open arms. And by the way, they're with air with open arms and Almost no e-commerce, which is a great place to be if you want to sell your product without worrying about friends and family sales. So themes, I think, will be powerful. And I think as we go into next year, we will continue to see that. But then there's always within, within this group, there's always opportunities to trade and find mispriced assets simply because we have these sentiment swings as well.